Hello, today we are going to discuss traumatic dislocations. Uh, actually, what is a dislocation? This is a condition when there is a loss of contact between two articular surfaces. It is considered to be a severe injury of a joint. Subluxation is a partial loss of contact between articular surfaces. Dislocations are very common for shoulder joint, for hip joint, for elbow joint, and less common for other joints. Let's talk about shoulder dislocation. When we talk about shoulder dislocation, we mean that the humeral head goes out of the glenoid cavity. It may go to different places. It may go anteriorly, inferiorly, posteriorly. Anteriorly, it can go under the coracoid process and under the clavicle. On the left X-ray, we just see the situation when the head of humerus is located under the coracoid process. So this is subcaracoid dislocation of the shoulder joint. It may also go to the axillary region form inferior dislocation of the shoulder joint. And there are possible two types posterior dislocations, posterior superior and posterior inferior. But those are quite rare. The normal anatomy of the shoulder joint is when the head is located in the glenoid cavity. And on the right side, you can see an X-ray where shoulder dislocation was reduced and X-ray was performed. Actually, the reduction of dislocation is an urgent procedure and should be done as soon as possible, in fast minutes and hours after injury. Clinical signs are very intensive pain, inability to perform movement in this joint, and injured arm is usually adducted to the trunk and is kept with another hand. Abduction is not possible. And if you palpate the area of shoulder joint, you and palpate the acromion process, which is protruding outside. And below it, you can palpate a gap. That means that the head of humerus is absent here. When you're trying to perform abduction, the arm goes back as a spring. So, how to perform reduction? There are several methods that can be used for this purpose. There is a method by Mood, by Hippocrates, by Simpson. But one of the most popular methods is a culture method, which is present here. It has four steps, and uh, performing the steps can provide quite uh, gentle and anatomical reduction of the dislocation. So on the first step, we perform traction along the axis of the extremity. We perform traction down within a few minutes. Then we are performing external rotation And the next step, we are performing adduction of the arm. The fourth step, we are doing internal rotation. And in this moment, we can feel that the shoulder dislocation is reduced. Very important point is that after a reduction, you should immobilize the limb. You should do it for three weeks 
you may use a sling, you may use a plaster bandage, soft bandage, dissolved bandage. Uh, if you won't do this, the incidence of recurrent dislocation is very high. Next very common dislocation is the dislocation in the elbow joint. On the left x-ray you can see that there is a loss of contact between articular surfaces of distal humerus and proximal ulna and radius. Let's start from the classification of these injuries. Actually, it may be dislocation of both on bones of forearm, ulna and radius, and only one bone, like radius, can be dislocated. That is very common for childs. When mother pull child on the hand, he can uh, rotate the forearm that can cause a pronational subluxation of the radial head. Uh, dislocations of both bones, so-called forearm dislocations, can be anterior and posterior. Uh, and uh, those are divided also in two types, as posterior lateral and posterior med medial, as well as anterior med medial and anterior lateral. Also, it is possible uh, a divergent dislocation when both bones goes on both sides of the humeral bone. And that is considered to be a very severe injury for an elbow joint. So actually we can perform this uh, dislocation under general anesthesia or under uh, um, local anesthesia. As well, we should do it as soon as possible. And after a reduction, you should apply a plaster bandage. Here you can see the reduced dislocation when articular surfaces are in their place and the plaster bandage is applied. Note that elbow joint shouldn't be immobilized for a long time. So 10 to 12 days is enough uh, to enough for immobilization. The next joint, which is quite commonly dislocated, is a hip joint. So we can uh, classify these dislocations into four types. It may be posterior superior dislocation, posterior inferior dislocation, anterior superior dislocation, and anterior inferior dislocation. Just this last time is quite rare, but it is presented on X-ray. You can see that the head of the femur is located in the obturatum ramen. On the normal X-ray, it should be located in the acetabulum. So what is the clinical science for uh, femoral dislocation. When we examine the patient, we can see that for posterior dislocations, the leg is flexed, it is adducted and internal rotated. For anterior dislocations, it's vice versa. Uh, the femur is abducted, it is also flexed, but is, it is externally rotated. Uh, of course, there is no movement in the hip joint and they are very painful and uh, the reduction should be done under general anesthesia with deep mirror relaxation. Here we can see the culture method of reduction when one doctor is fixing pelvis with both hands and another one is pulling along the axis of the femur and then performing external rotation and extension of the hip. After reduction, uh, skeletal traction is usually applied for one month 
and later a uh, restriction of weight bearing is used so patient is using crutches to prevent weight bearing for a period of up to three months on this x-ray you can see the dislocation in the knee joint it's not as common as uh, hip dislocations and shoulder dislocations but it is considered to be a very severe injury on this x-ray we can see that proximal part of tibia is shifted to the anterior part so it is anterior dislocation in the knee joint also called anterior dislocation of tibia uh, usually this injury uh, can cause the uh, injury of ligaments which are surrounding the knee joint so-called ACL and PCL ligaments and medial and lateral collateral ligaments as well as meniscus also uh, the damage of arteria popliteae is possible so this dislocation should be reduced as soon as possible to perform to prevent further complications and plaster bandage is applied for a period of one month and a half that's all for today thank you very much bye